Good evening. This is Radio Free Bichelle. I'm Alphonse. Tonight, pleasing. When I was in elementary school and high school, a couple of things were clear. First, girls did better than boys. They got the top grades, almost always. The other was that girls did what the teachers wanted, and the boys didn't. And that wasn't just because boys were inherently uncooperative. We also knew, or most of us knew, that if you were the kind of boy who did what the teacher wanted, then you were kind of a suck. You actually weren't a proper boy at all. And so I suspect a lot of boys stayed silent and didn't volunteer in class. Now, of course, the things the teachers wanted weren't always academic things. The teachers wanted praise. They wanted people who'd feed them back whatever they told the class, whether what they told the class was reasonable or not. Certain kinds of arguments weren't welcome. So, generally speaking, the girls didn't make those arguments. And generally speaking, the boys probably didn't either because they didn't say much at all. Or some of them did. But the boys who did, you know, those were the, ger- the, the nerds and the geeky ones. That's the code as I understood it, anyway. And I suspect that hasn't changed necessarily all that much in many places. But I realized something towards the end of high school, which was that although the boys weren't doing as well, they weren't getting the grades, and the girls were getting all the top marks, and that has certainly not changed, by the way, that I thought in the long run it was the girls who were going to suffer more. Because the girls were pleasers. They had been trained from a young age to do what other people wanted, not to live for themselves, but to live for others, that they would get rewards from teachers for doing what the teachers demanded of them. But then I thought, and I really did think in the last year of high school, what happens when they leave? What happens when they get out of school into the wide world and the teacher isn't there to give them a reward. What are they going to do? And I felt sorry for them. Because I thought the boys, who basically said, we don't care, would be okay. Their motivation came from within. But the girls, because they had been trained and had this reinforced again and again, that their motivation should come from others praising them, would be lost without that praise. I don't know for a fact that that's what happened, but I have my suspicions. I have the impression a lot of women do very well in school. They try very hard. They do what's asked of them. They do what's expected. They work hard. And the boys, you know, kind of slack off, don't take it very seriously. And then the girls do get out of school. And they find that the hard work that they did in school doesn't necessarily have the same effect in the world outside, and they feel betrayed, as well they should, and they look for something to blame. Now, the current thing that they blame is patriarchy, and I'm not saying that has nothing to do with it. Perhaps it does. But I think part of what happened is that they were told a story that wasn't true, and that wasn't really in their interests, and they got hurt by it. And the boys got hurt by it, by it, too, because we know today that getting those grades is really important to getting the right education, which is important to getting the right credentials, which is necessary for getting the right jobs. So what we're ending up with is a lot of boys who might be capable, who had the potential, and didn't have it realized because they didn't do the things, didn't jump through the hoops that they were supposed to jump through, and girls who did jump through the hoops and were very successful, and show how hard they could work and how smart they were, but now discover that they're not getting the rewards that they thought they were promised. It's a sad situation all around. And it's not just that. Those girls are also taught to be pleasers in general, and it's not just in school. Girls are brought up to do things for other people, to put other people first. And so, you know, we know that they they don't ask for raises as much in the job. They probably are self-sacrificing. I'm talking in generalities here, of course. This is all averages. There are plenty of exceptions. But anyway, they're more likely to be self-sacrificing with their partners, for example, and they'll get taken advantage of. And 
they see it as sexism, and in a way it is, because that's how girls are brought up, but in a way it's also because of this dynamic. And I just think it's really sad. But look what we're trying to do to fix it, it seems. The solution seems to be to make more and more of life like high school, to make life beyond school as if it's still assessed by these same kinds of criteria. I mean, the ir- irony is, is that school itself structurally is patriarchal. In other words, you can take the men out of it, it doesn't matter, but it has that same hierarchy where you're working for someone who's up on top and that person approves of you and that person gives you your self-worth by saying, you're worth this, you know, you got these grades. And we're doing that more and more in the outside world. And I think that's a mistake. It's reinforcing, again, the same dynamic that has made girls and boys, men and women, miserable. But that's the romantic thing. Maybe I sort of wonder if that's part of the reason that, that Hogwarts and Harry Potter are so popular, because they, they recall that dynamic, that place where people have been so successful by following the rules and maybe bending them a bit. So what are we doing about this? We're making the rest of the world more like school. We're making it so that in more and more areas of life, we're working inside hierarchies, inside systems. We're, we're striving to please somebody, striving to please everybody, in fact, not just the people in our organization, but the people for whom we have to perform in our personas that we wear online and on social media and all of this stuff. And it's constant question of, are they approving of me? Are they affirming me? Or are they not? And that affirmation is fundamentally, I believe, damaging. You know, this is, I think, one of the really dangerous things about identity politics, in fact. I object to the concept of ascribed identity. In other words, somebody who really has a secure identity, who really knows who they are, doesn't need a box or a label to put on it. They're just themselves. My identity is me. That's what I want it to be anyway. But if I depend on other people recognize me, recognizing me as an X, whatever X might be, affirming me as an X, then I have taken power away from myself and I've given it to them. Now I am dependent on what other people think of me and I'm not independent. I can't decide who I want to be anymore. And if those people decide to judge me differently, then I've got a real problem, because then my identity is under threat. So, to stop that from happening, I need to please them. I need to play up to whatever identity it is that I'm supposed to have. And in the end, the result is that I'm weak. I lose myself. I think identity is one of those things Many of the most important things in life are like this. Things like love. Things like wisdom. Things that you can't actually chase them and catch them. The harder you try to grab them, the harder you hold on to them, the more elusive they become. They're the things that that come while you're doing other things. While you're working with the flow of life and the flow of the world. But if you fight too hard for them, they will elude you. I think identity is like that. But I think our structures from our schools that teach us to that teach us to please, from how we teach our girls to please, to be pleasers, and from the whole political social thing around identity is all going down this path that I think is really damaging and dangerous and leaving people not knowing who they are and even if they think they knew who they are. It's a fragile place to be because it could be hurt by anybody else who doesn't see it the way they need it to be seen. If we really want to be free, we need to start peeling away some of the layers, some of the affirmations, some of the praise that we give to people and let them just be themselves. This is Alphonse for Radio Free Bichelle, www.bezel.ca.
Good night.